There's something particularly interesting about this era that we're living in. The information technology, the internet, the ability to read Russian news outlets just straight on Twitter. The U.S. fired over 100 missiles at Syrian targets. They're saying this is in response to Assad's use of chemical weapons and that the missiles targeted facilities that were critical in the production of chemical weapons. They say that they did this strike in, a, in such a manner that it would reduce the amount of civilian casualties. And what does Russia say? Well, Russia is saying that the Syrian air defense shot down 71 of these missiles, and they're saying that they have proof that it was not Syria that used the chemical weapons. So who do you believe, and how are we supposed to know what the hell is even going on? It's not the same as it was before. We used to have only a few news outlets telling us exactly what to think, exactly what was happening. But now, everything, it's much, much different. Before we get started, make sure you go to youtube.com forward slash TimCast if you are not already there. Hit that subscribe button and click that little bell. That bell tells YouTube that you would like to be notified when I post a video because believe it or not, subscribing, yeah, they're not going to show you my videos even if you're subscribed. Also, make sure to go to patreon.com forward slash TimCast and become a patron today. There are many different tiers to choose from. Most notably is tier one. At $10 per month, you get access to behind the scenes photos and videos when I am out in the field, bonus commentary videos. So please consider supporting my work by becoming a patron today. First, the New York Times. US, Britain, and France strike Syria over suspected chemical weapons attack. The United States and European allies launched airstrikes on Friday night against Syrian research storage and military targets as President Trump sought to punish President Bashar al-Assad for a suspected chemical attack near Damascus last week that killed more than 40 people. Britain and France joined the United States in the strikes in a coordinated operation that was intended to show Western resolve in the face of what the leaders of the three nations called persistent violations of international law. Mr. Trump characterized it as the beginning of a sustained effort to force Mr. Assad to stop using banned weapons, but only ordered a limited one-night operation that hit three targets. So how do we know that Assad actually used chemical weapons? We don't. When it comes to military operations and war, we tend not to know what is going on because there's secret, top secret, classified, there's security clearance, and obviously the US military isn't going to publish exactly how they know what they know. In which case, your option is to either trust or distrust the government. And I think depending on whether people trust or distrust the government, you're going to see whether or not they support the strikes on Syria. But what I find particularly strange is that there's a lot of people who absolutely do not trust the government. They're angry about Donald Trump being president, but they're actually in favor of intervention. So there's, it's, it's kind of weird, I would say. But France has declassified how they know this attack was carried out by Assad, and it is actually kind of scary why they think so. The French services analyzed the testimonies, photos, and videos that spontaneously appeared on specialized website in the press and on social media in the hours and days following the attack, and this from Harris. Testimony obtained by the French services were also analyzed. After examining the videos and images of victims published online, they were able to conclude with a high degree of confidence that the vast majority are recent and not fabricated. The spontaneous circulation of these images across all social networks confirms that they were not video montages or recycled images. Lastly, some of the entities that publish this information are generally considered reliable. Is that enough for you? It's not enough for me. Telling me that you went online and to specialized websites and looked at circulated photos and videos so you think this is true, that's a scary reason to fire over 100 missiles at a foreign country. From CNN, Trump declares mission accomplished in Syria strike. President Donald Trump declared mission accomplished in Friday night's strike on three Syria targets and argued that it could not have had a better result. A perfectly executed strike last night, Trump tweeted Saturday. Thank you to France and the United Kingdom for their wisdom and the power of their fine military. Could not have had a better result mission accomplished. However, Russia is claiming that most of the missiles were actually shot down and they faced only minimal damage. From The Guardian, Russia claims Syria air defense shot down 71 of 103 missiles. The Russian military has claimed that the Syrian air defense, whose most modern weapon is a three decades old Russian supplied anti-aircraft system, shot down 71 of 103 missiles 
fired by the US and its allies, the UK and France, a claim denied by the Pentagon. And now, where it gets a little better, another story where Western forces are refuting Russia's claim that Syrian air defense shot down these missiles. Once again, from The Guardian, allies dispute Russian and Syrian claims of shot down missiles. The US, UK, and France have disputed claims made by Syria and Russia that a significant number of incoming missiles were intercepted and shot down, and that the damage inflicted by their raid had been minimal. The Pentagon insisted that no missiles were intercepted by Syrian defenses, and that the raids were precise and overwhelming, while claiming the Syrian air defenses remained largely ineffective. You know the most dangerous thing to either government is right now, and I'm talking about the US and Russia, certainly UK and France are involved. The most dangerous thing in the world is an actual journalist on the ground watching what's going on. Because if you are actually there and you see these missile strikes and you film them, you're either going to prove the US right or the US wrong. If you prove the US right, Russia is going to be angry with you. If you prove the US wrong, the US is going to be angry with you. I've been going through these stories trying to figure out what the hell's really happening. And usually, when it comes to journalism, there's multiple perspectives to consider. But both countries have a stake in this game, and they're going to try and push the narrative in whichever way benefits them. So naturally, Russia is claiming that there's no evidence Assad carried out these attacks. In fact, Russia is claiming they have proof that the attacks were actually carried out by foreign interests or that it was a false flag. From Vice News. Russia says Syria chemical attack was a false flag by Britain and the White Helmets. Russia took its war of words with the West to a new level Friday, accusing Britain of having staged the Duma chemical attack as a false flag operation to justify US airstrikes on Syria. The Kremlin's narrative, the UK funded Syrian medical group, the White Helmets faked the April 7 attack in Duma with the help of the British government. The idea was first floated by lower ranking Russian officials earlier in the week, but by Friday, it was being pushed by some of the Kremlin's most powerful men, including Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. Lavrov told a press briefing that Moscow had irrefutable evidence that this was another staged event and that the secret services of a certain state that is now at the forefront of a Russophobic campaign was involved in this. He provided no evidence for the claim. So here's, I've noticed a few things that I want to point out in these stories. Vice News has this line in their story. He provided no evidence for the claim. And in The Guardian, they say, whose most modern weapon is a three decades old Russian supplied anti-aircraft system. I find that interesting because when they talk about the missiles fired at Syria, they don't tell us anything about how old the missiles are or what their capabilities are. We know that they're Tomahawk cruise missiles, okay? Are they somehow better than the anti-air system that Syria has? Or is this just an attempt to make us think that it's not likely to have occurred because their weapons are ineffective? Why did Vice News say that Lavrov pro provided no evidence? Did the US provide evidence that the chemical attack actually happened? No, there's just speculation to bound. And all we can really do is say, do I trust the government? I don't trust either of these governments. I think the US absolutely has reasons to lie, and I think Russia has reasons to lie, and I think both are going to lie to push their agenda. I will say though, I'm an American. I benefit greatly from the success of America. So this presents us with a very awkward conundrum as Americans. Do you say, you know what, the, that America is probably doing something that's going to benefit me, so I'm going to allow them to do it, or do you say, there is nothing worth risking international conflict, World War III, or bombing foreign countries even if it does make your life better. And this is the conundrum, because you can either choose to support your country or oppose it. And if this conflict really does escalate beyond just where we are now, and we see an actual retaliation by Russia on American, British, or French targets, we could actually be looking at full-scale international war. But the point of this video is that outside of actual conflict, the era we are in, the information age, Everything is about controlling your mind and gaining influence over your opinions. If majority of Americans reject the war and reject what's happening, that will be really bad for the US government. I think the US government's gonna do whatever it wants and I think it'll be a cold day in hell when Americans actually do something to stand up to war and conflict. So I don't know if the government is really worried about that. But you can see the disinformation campaign coming out in full force. And who do you trust? Do you trust President Trump and his advisors? Or do you distrust President Trump? 
because there are many people who hate Trump and think he is a bad person and a white supremacist and a Nazi, whatever, all those bad things. But now they have to choose between supporting the intervention in Syria and opposing it. And there are a lot of activists on the left who absolutely oppose Trump, have always opposed Trump, and absolutely oppose intervention. But what I find pretty scary is that if you go to Twitter and search, change the news cycle, you will see many people who believe that the US government and its allies fired 105 cruise missiles on a foreign government to just change the news cycle. There are people that are so distrustful of Western governments, Britain, France, the US, and President Trump, that they actually think that this is an international coalition military strike aimed at protecting Trump from the Russia investigation. So what's particularly strange with this missile strike is the people who think that Trump is a Putin puppet now are faced with a conundrum. Is Trump acting at the behest of Putin? Is the UK and France? Certainly that all can't be true. Perhaps Trump is colluding with Putin, but then could you say the United Kingdom is? France is? The Spectator Index tweeted, breaking, Pentagon says there has been a 2000% increase in disinformation from Russian trolls over the past 24 hours. So let's say that's true. I, I can't confirm this, but this is being spread around and people are, are, are sharing this information. Does that mean the Russian trolls now are anti-Trump? Are they pro-Trump or are they anti-Trump? Is Trump working for Putin or isn't he? The disinformation that's been going on over the past several years has been so ridiculous and it's only continuing to get worse. I think we're going to come to a point where it will be impossible to know anything and we might already be there. I was thinking about doing a story on the cause of the conflict, what's happening and where we're going. But when I try to look at various sources, depending on their affiliation, they report the news whatever way benefits them. History is written by the winners and history books are condensed. When we read about past history, it really does feel like these things happened overnight. Like one day we were at peace and then bam, the war started. But depending on who you ask, you will get a different response as to when World War II started. Many Americans will say Pearl Harbor, even though clearly the war was happening in Europe long before Pearl Harbor. People in Europe might say when Germany invaded Poland. Just a matter of perspective. There are probably many Americans who understand the history and are going to say it was when Germany invaded Poland or some other moment. At what point does war really start? At what point does this become World War III, if possible? Maybe it won't be, maybe this will die down, and maybe one side or the other will win, they'll lose Syria, and then they'll back off because we might be pushing ourselves to the brink of destruction because of our nuclear arsenals. But keep in mind that war is a gradual thing, and I don't think there's going to be a point at which we can say, this is when the war started. Obviously, if one country fires a nuke on the other, then sure. But keep in mind, the US fired 59 Tomahawk missiles one year ago. I'm also really curious how Trump supporters feel about this one. Because one of the strongest points in Trump's campaign was that Hillary was inching towards war with Russia. And now Trump has done a pretty damn good job of that, even last year and now this year, because this isn't the first time we have fired missiles on Syria. So do you feel like you were lied to? Do you still support the president? I'd love to hear what you think. Comment below, we'll keep the conversation going. Stay tuned, new videos every day at 4 p.m. Tomorrow is the podcast and we spoke with a survivalist. There's a question that is, is asked. I think it's a bit facetious. It's, can liberals survive an apocalypse? The Daily Show did a segment about this and they always mock liberals saying they wouldn't make it. So I decided to meet with a survivalist and talk about it. And that's tomorrow's podcast, tomorrow at four. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all then.